So last class, uh, what we did was this bow. Uh, today, I wanted to start blocking out the arrow and the coin. And what we're going to do is at the end of this set, we're going to set up a little scene to render it and everything. And it'll look cool, clean. And uh, I'll show you how to do uh, some pretty cool techniques. So uh, what I want to do is I want to find my reference again for uh, my model. And for those of you guys who are feeling ambitious, you can uh, definitely uh, create this uh, extra piece to the bow or to the arrow. But what I'm going to focus on is just making the standard arrow without this extra, uh, you know, uh, extra piece. And uh, if you do go ahead and make that extra piece, you will get extra credit for it. Uh, so. Uh, if you're feeling, you know, you, you want to challenge yourself, then I would definitely go ahead and do it. And I will also myself make it uh, in my spare time, but I don't want to uh, try to take up class. I'll show you guys how I would approach uh, something like this. But, you know, you guys have pretty much learned all the techniques uh, to do something like that. I've shown you how to draw on objects and different things like that. So I've shown you how to make a rope and things like that as well. So these are things that you guys now have in your arsenal. This is something that you guys all uh, can do. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna start blocking out our arrow as well. So you know we're gonna have our bow, our arrow, and our quiver uh, as well. So we'll we'll start next with the arrow, and then maybe next class we'll do. Uh, the quiver and you know we'll just we're just gonna move right along with this stuff and it's not it's not uh, it's not the end of the world so let's go first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a uh, a line tool and I'm going to go into my front view and then align it in my front view and you guys should all have this image as well it is in your reference and all I'm going to do now is uh, just draw a straight line right hold down shift and I don't care that theirs is a straight I'm going to make sure that mine is straight and I'm going to make it the entire length of that uh, that arrow like that and now that I've got my my uh, base arrow what I can do is in my line parameters I can enable it in the renderer and I can enable it in the viewport so now we can see uh, geometry replacing that uh, that line or that spline that we had so now I've, I've selected uh, radius and I've made it uh, pretty this is saying it's an inch thick and that's pretty much a good uh, a good size for this so uh, we're gonna start with this and the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go back into my line and I'm going to use my line here to draw out the shape that we see right here for the arrow tip or the arrowhead. So right there like so. So this is one way you can do it, right? Or what I another way I like to I would, you know, I could do this is I'm going to go into my rectangle tool here, right? And then I'm just going to draw out a, uh, a rectangle right over our line. So it's making us a new shape. And I'm going to go into my view and I'm going to turn off or enable and renderer and viewport. All right. So I'm just going to duplicate this guy a little bit and then so that I can see what he looks like right here. So I'm just going to duplicate this guy and bring it over here so I can see it while I uh, while I work. So I'm going to select this guy and I just want to right click. I'm going to convert this guy into an editable spline. I'm going to hit one on my keyboard and it may be a little hard to see right now, but I've got my vertices here selected. So let me go into I hit F and Z to zoom in. I'm going to select my verts, right click, and I'm going to turn them into corners. All right. So now that I've got them turned into corners, let's bring this guy over here like so. All right. Let me just rotate this a 
little bit like that. Just make sure it's straight. So I'm using, you know, that reference, just turning it, you know, don't be afraid to, to turn your reference, do what you need to do to make this, make this happen. So and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab these two points right here and I'm going to actually, instead of filleting them, if I fillet them, it's going to round them out. I don't want to fillet them. I want to chamfer them in here. So I'm going to chamfer that, those guys like that. And if I wanted to, I can weld this, but I'm not going to weld that. I'm just going to select all of them again. Because for some reason, it automatically turns these guys into bezier corner handles. I don't want bezier corner handles. I want uh, corners on everything. So now with my corner selected, all right, I can then, I'm actually going to take my, uh, my edge selection. That's two on the keyboard. And all I'm doing is I'm here in my selection. I use one, two, and three to select these, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, right? And I'm not having to go here, but if you guys don't know what I'm doing, how I'm selecting all of these, and it looks like it's magic, it's just these selections, it's mapped to one, two, and three on your keyboard. So, uh, so I've got that guy selected right there, and I'm just gonna scroll down in my uh, viewport, and then there's this option here that I can use, it's called divide, and I can just divide, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a segment right in the middle so if I divide this it's gonna divide it evenly and it's gonna give me a vertex in the middle and with that vertex I can just pull this guy up all right like that so you know it's this is the kind of you know this is it's easy because I'm using a spline I'm working in 2d first and then I can take this and then uh, change it into into 3d all right so if i select those i can scale these down on the y-axis like so all right and i can pull this guy in just a little bit like that and now all i have to do is turn this guy into an editable poly like that Right now, I've made sure that I've got myself uh, an edit editable poly. And before I go, I can still go back. And that's the you know that's the cool thing that I try to show you guys is I'm non-destructively editing. So I've gone into here, but oh, I forgot to do something. Now I can go back in and then chamfer this guy just a little bit. Just and just that's way too much. But that might I might be what I need though. Because if you see, you know, it kind of goes into it. So um, once again, I'm going to select all of it, turn it, turn them into corners, hit two on my keyboard, pull this guy in like so, and then just scale this guy, uh, scale this guy in. All right. And now I can go back into my edit poly and I've got these guys. So now it's just poly modeling, right? Right click connect those two, select these guys, right click, connect those two, all right, it's at the, at the end of the day, it's just poly modeling at the end of it, all right. So what I might want to do though is uh, collapse these guys, right click and just collapse them. So we've got a straight edge right down the middle and uh, we can throw a shell modifier, all right? Shell modifier on this guy like that. Hit edit poly on our keyboard. Select these two top ones right here. And we can start to, whoop. I'm gonna select all of this. Then I'm just gonna pull these guys in. This is gonna give us all our kind of our arrow arrow sharpness down the middle. Right. And if I want I can uh, select these two 
just scale them up on the Y like that to make sure. So if you're not seeing uh, the type of sharpness, you can just clear, clear your smoothing groups and it'll start to give you that sharpness that you're looking for. So what I want to do now is make sure that my edges are the way they need to be. So now I'm going to just go back and look at my uh, my reference. I just need to see my reference a little bit and uh, use that to. Okay. I'm going to hit two on my keyboard and that'll bring me well, to my edge mode like that. So now if, if I just threw a turbo smooth, you guys could see what it would do. Turbo smooth. All right, but if I turn on my smoothing groups, let's go back here and then auto smooth by 45. Let's do 30. So it does it at a better angle at 30. We're going to clear that and do 30. And you can see it's going to start creasing these edges a little bit better. All right. But that's not what I want to do. So that's a technique that you guys can use. So the next thing I really want to do now is I want to delete this guy right here select uh, select our new edge and I'm just going to add a symmetry modifier to it so now you guys can see we now have uh, our our basic arrowhead ready to go so I'm going to hit F on my keyboard like so So the next thing I want to draw is I want to draw these kind of this kind of feather pattern that it's got going here. And you know, to do that, all we need to do is use the line tool. And the line tool is very useful for things like this because you know you can you can you can draw what you need to. So I'm just gonna if I hold down shift, right, it makes sure that I have that right angle whenever I'm drawing. So I'm just gonna do that on the horizontal axis here. Just only on, then I'm gonna freehand it. So I'm just gonna, boom. Whenever I'm going horizontal again, right? Boom. All right. So you guys get the idea. Just wherever I think that there is a uh, a break in the feathers, there's a break right there. And then boom. And then boom. And then boom. So now I've closed that spline. And now I can still go back in and uh, and edit my my spline so I can pull them up if I need to, you know, because it, it's kind of got this, you know, kind of that a nice little curve as well. So I want to uh, I want to acknowledge that and put that into my into my model as well. So what I can do is I can take this guy, like I showed you guys how to do earlier. I can go into my uh, model here I can even up the amount that I want to divide it by so I can do maybe three hit one on the keyboard and then just pull like that all right and if you want you know you can go in and make sure that You've got some some good looking uh, looking edges and topology on your stuff, and 
just gonna pull these guy up, these guys up a little bit more. Oops. 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 Here, one on the keyboard, and I'm just selecting these guys and pulling them up. All right, so you know, I'm just working with uh, working with what I have, and now I can hit the edit poly modifier, and I've got some okay topology that all I have to do now is just triangulate and cut them. So I'll hit Alt C on the keyboard. And I can just just cut these. Or I can go back into my spline, hit two on my keyboard again, and then just two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'm just gonna go here and then hit ten and then divide it by ten. And then go back into my edit poly. And now I've already got these to work with. All right. So you know. You just want to make sure you're working smarter, not harder. I'm just trying to make it easier for myself in the long run. I'm trying to think ahead into the model, you know. Connect and connect. And right now they're kind of wild. So what I can do to make them a little more straight is uh, just select the the verts go into my edge selection right here my edge constraints and I can constrain this to this edge and make sure that it you know there making sure And I've got one, two, three here. Where I can do the same thing where I just hit two on my keyboard. Actually, first I'm going to connect these guys this way. Connect that. Connect that. And the thing is, you can still build, you can build this, what I'm doing, in edit poly mode as well All right there's a bunch of different ways to do a bunch of things and i hope you guys are starting to see that you know i can build it poly modeling i can use splines to start it off um whatever it requires whatever i need whatever makes me feel more comfortable you know that's what you got to do so just, just start connecting these guys All right. And that just mean that just makes me have you know just better topology, and I'm looking one, two, three, four, five. That's five. That's an end gone. I don't want that, so I need to see cut that out. All right. So now, if you guys look, I'm you know I have all of this geo here. 
I have it. Uh, just fix them on the edge. All right. Now I can throw a shell modifier on it. It's kind of thick. Let's do uh, 0.5.1. All right. So now I can just hit the mirror. I want to mirror on the Z. And I want to make sure I have an instance of it. Okay. So hit OK on the keyboard and I can pull this guy down like that. Select those. Like so. Shift. I'll actually hit A on the keyboard to turn on my snaps. I can just turn it. 90. All right. So just like that, you know, we've blocked in uh, we blocked in this arrow as well. All right. To finish this guy off, I want to connect this guy into there and uh, there's a little piece here and then there's some some little detail that's actually on the arrow I think it's where these guys go into the arrow so uh, we're gonna create all of that information and uh, wrap this guy up just because it's one of those you know it's an easier kind of model it shouldn't take you too much uh, longer once you've got kind of a good base for yourself all right so what I'm going to do now is just throw an edit poly modifier and you guys can see that I've got all these stacks of modifiers here and I don't let them go until I have finalized my model and made sure that uh, what I have is is gonna work so uh, the next thing I want to do now is I want to select my uh, my edges here and kind of sharpen them out so uh, I'm going to select this guy. Actually, let's select this middle uh, middle guy right there. I'm going to Alt deselect those. And what we can do is we can either extrude, right? Something like that so that we get that, that final sharp uh, that edge that we're looking for. Right. And then control select to select those uh, verts right click and I'm just gonna weld I'm gonna actually control a to select everything I'm just gonna weld everything together so you can see that we went from 30 to uh, 20 verts so I'm just gonna hit ok and I'm actually gonna take these guys in here and I'm gonna delete them Gonna take those guys, delete them, select these guys, and cap, cap those. All right, hit one on the keyboard, select that, and then connect there. Select this guy, connect here, and we've got these extra verts here that we want to just. Uh, we want to just target weld and if we want we can just hide this guy right here so we can focus on our arrowhead so I'm just gonna one on the keyboard and what I can do is target weld this guy right here to this and then target weld this guy to this guy like that all right so the next thing I want to do is I want to I want to create a circle right here that our arrow would can fit into right and to do that I'm just gonna right click chamfer and then uh, 
to make sure that it is a hole. Actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to clean this up. I'm going to select these two guys, hit control and backspace on there. All right. I'm going to clear that out. So I'm just going to hit two. Got three, one, two, three, four. So this is actually a clean geo right here. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to now select these guys right here. I'm going to inset this guy. And do point three, nope, point one, okay, point oh one. 0 0.02 point point oh, oh, six. okay so now I'm going to select this middle one ring connect all right, so now I've got one right in the middle, right where I want one, one of these verts to be in. All right, so if I chamfer it, it's going to, and I turn uh, this whole thing on, right, this open chamfer, it's going to create a hole right there for me. All right, that's kind of what I want. So I'm going to increase the radius just a little bit like so. And then if I cap that, just gonna right click, cap, right? What I can do is if I go into my polygons, if I do geo poly, it's gonna turn my selection into a, uh, into a circle but now I've got a problem where my uh, my verts aren't connected so I can just connect these guys and that'll fix the issue that we're having All right so now I've got this hole right in the middle right where I want it so now if I unhide all, I just want to make sure that it's big enough to encompass our arrow. So I'm just going to hide those, select that, Alt and Q to isolate my selection. All right, and I just want to make sure that I've got one that's big enough to, to grab that arrow. So I scale it up like that. And if I shift drag, I can shift drag out uh, some polys to create that I can just do an inset right. so create that and then what I can do with this guy is I can just align it to the center All right so I just want to make sure it's on the Z and maybe the Y and then we should be good. All right. So as you can see, our shape fits right into that guy like that. All right. So just like that, we have uh, created that arrow tip. That so four. If I alt one on my keyboard, I can uh, just throw some edge loops in here. It'll sharpen that edge up for us. So what I want to do is select that, hit clear, hit 30, and then 
auto. We can get some different. But. All right. So we will leave this for now and then let's finish off the uh, those other pieces that I was talking about. So we can call this guy a day. So there are these two little nodules that are on the side and that's easy to create. So we can just hit two on our keyboard. We've got our line here, but now we want to maybe just throw an edit poly on it. It all in one and that's gonna bring up right our swift loop, just so you guys remember where it is. It's right up here in our uh, in our modeling tab here. So it's right here on the edit uh, side of it. So Alt-1, I have that set to a hotkey for myself. Alt-1, and then I can just throw some, some edge loops in here. I'm just gonna make it so that it touches right there. And there's one right here, and then right here. And then there's this little cap where the, the, arrow, uh, the arrow meets. And I'll show you guys how to make that as well. All right, so this is easy, easy detail. So I'm just gonna grab this like that, grab this like that, right click. I'm actually going to uh, let's extrude it. And then click on this so it extrudes it on its local normals. And now I've got my extrude. And now all I've gotta select is these two edges right here. And I'm gonna throw a chamfer on them. All right now I've got a nice chamfered edge and maybe I'll do two like so. All right, just trying to match that silhouette value. And then I can select this guy right here. If I hit Control and Shift at the same time, I can create a uh, clone part of the mesh and then make it into its own element. So now it's still in this entire thing. And what I want to do now is just start connecting some of this stuff. So I'm just going to connect there. So like these guys connect here, All right? Just connecting, and then I'm going to select these two, and I can shift. Actually, I'm going to select these guys. No, do what I had before. Select these guys, and I can just shift drag out like that okay so it seems it's got like a little weird shape so we can probably imitate that so I'm just gonna select this guy bring this guy so it goes into our OG mesh like so. Grab these guys, shift, drag them out like so. One on the keyboard. Maybe move this guy over like that. And then grab this guy. So it looks like it's got this kind of weird shape to it. So maybe grab Hit F3, grab these two top ones, these two bottom ones, and then uh, F on the keyboard, and then extrude. Actually, maybe we can hit Alt-1, and just add a few. Gonna scale this up like so. Let me actually add one more here and here. Hit one on the keyboard, selecting 
whoops just selecting these guys are on the keyboard scale up a little bit like that on that way and then alt deselect these guys All right All right, now we've got that kind of shape going in there. All right, it'll probably give him, you know, something to pull, put his hands on in between the, to pull the, to pull the arrow and the string back, so. All right, so I'm just gonna select all of it again, clear my smoothing groups and auto smooth. All right, so just like that, we have made our arrow and we have our uh, our bow. All right, so with that, that is going to be the end of class today. Um, and as usual, whenever you guys finish this part, you guys are going to want to uh, do a quick render of it you should already have your render kind of set up right you should have all your renders ready to go you should be able to just grab this guy shift drag make it a copy select these guys alt and q will isolate them for us and all i've got to do now because i've made a lot of these materials already I can just go in and start. Uh, let me drag my material over my material editor so you guys can see uh, my material screen. So, you know, all I've got to do now is just start assigning those uh, those materials that I've already kind of pre-made. You know, so ribbon, feather, and then I'll do a basic metal. All right. So this is simple uh, easy to do and you guys should knock this out of the park so next class we're gonna start finalizing some of this stuff finalizing our high poly uh, these these are just our block outs and uh, whenever we finish those you guys will start to see the the real difference in the in the model all right